the PYFL presents All-Star Youth Football at its finest. They're some of the most talented young players in Southern California, if not the nation. And on this day, they meet on the gridiron at Granada Hills Charter High School in an East-West format in the Midget Division. Now let's meet the team. My name is Johnny Munter. I play for the Lancaster Jets. And my position is outside linebacker and wide receiver. And, uh, and my favorite athlete is Kobe Bryant. My name is Nicholas Wyatt. My team is Lancaster Eagles. My position, my position is running back. And favorite athlete is um, Adrian Peterson. My name is Micah Adams. Play for the Palmdale Pat. Palmdale Falcons. My position is um, quarterback and my favorite athlete is Russell Wilson. My name is Jalen Sargent. I play for the Lancaster Jets and my position is running back and my favorite athlete is Adrian Peterson. My name is William Camacho. I play for the Palmdale Falcons. My position is middle linebacker and my favorite player is Adrian Peterson. My name is Isaiah Torres. I play for Palmdale Falcons. My position is cornerback, and my favorite athlete is Drew Brees. My name is Isaiah Creech. I play for Palmdale Falcons. I play kicker, um, outside linebacker, and my favorite athlete is Kobe Bryant. Hello, my, my name is Jamil Brooks. I play for the Palmdale Falcons. My position is free safety, and my favorite athlete is Randall Cunningham. Hello, my name is Cole Jackson. I'm the quarterback for the Santa Clarita Warriors, and my favorite player is Marshawn Lynch. Hi, my name is Lucas Gonzalez. I play wide receiver for the uh, Santa Clarita Warriors, and my favorite athlete is Des Bryant. Hi, my name is Zach Johnson. I play quarterback for the Santa Clarita Warriors, and my favorite athlete is Peyton Manning. Hi, my name is Damon Hendra. I play for the Palmdale Falcons. I'm a fullback and an outside linebacker, and my favorite player is Adrian Peterson. Hi, my name is Rusty Griswold. Um, I'm wide receiver. I uh, um. I play for the Santa Clarita Warriors, and uh, my favorite player is um, Derek McFadden. Hi, my name is Raymond Ortiz. Play for Palmdale Falcons, uh, middle or uh, right linebacker. And my favorite player is Jonathan Vilma. Hi, I'm Renee Montoya. Uh, I play defensive end. I used to play for the Simi Valley Patriots, and my favorite player is Ray Lewis. Hi, my name is Kamari Burks. I play for the Palmdale Falcons, number 23 defensive end. My favorite player is Ray Lewis. Hi, my name is Mitchell Torres. I play for the Santa Clarita Warriors. I play wide receiver. My favorite player is Antoine Bolden. Hi, I'm Evan Fassett. I play for West Valley Rebels. I'm number 26 and I play running back. And my favorite player is Russell Wilson. Hi, my name is Dylan DeVito. I'm number 23 for the Valley Bengals. I play middle linebacker. And my favorite player is Ray Lewis. Hi, my name is uh, Enzo Hurtado. Uh, I play slot receiver for the Palmdale Falcons. Um, my favorite player is Victor Cruz. Hi, my name is Darion Doris. I play with the West Valley Rebels. My position is middle linebacker, and my favorite player is Ray Lewis. My name is Zachary Hawkins. I'm, I play for the Valley Bengals. I'm a running back, and my best player is Reggie Bush. Hi, my name is Anthony Ros Rosali. I, I, pl I play for Outlaws middle linebacker. My number is 43, and my favorite player is Troy Palomala. Hey, my name is Owen Hand. I, I'm a running back for the Warriors, and my favorite player is Ahmad Bradshaw. My name is Joe Naya. I play for the Seminoles. My position is linebacker and running back, and my favorite player is Drew Brees. Hi, my name is Marcus Marchand. I play for the Palmdale Falcons. Um, my position is D-tackle and guard. Uh, my favorite player is J.J. Watt. Hi, my name is Joseph and I play left guard. Uh, I play for Simi Valley Patriots, and my favorite player is Drew Brees. My name is Leighton McCarthy. I play for the Santa Clarita Redskins. My position is right tackle, and my favorite player is Ray Lewis. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Vincent Casillas. I play for the Santa Clarita Redskins. I play right guard and defensive tackle, and my favorite player is J.J. Watts. Hello, my name is Tyler Ayers. I play for the Santa Clarita Warriors. I play right guard and D-tackle, and my favorite player is Demarius Thomas. Hi, my name is Hunter Smith. I, I play for the SCVAA Redskins. My position is wide receiver, and my favorite player is Calvin Johnson. My name is Evan Nua. I play for the SCVAA Apaches. I play defensive tackle, and I like Calvin Johnson. Hi, my name is Joshua Buckley. I'm a defensive end for the Newbury Park Steelers, and my favorite athlete is Demarcus Ware. My name is Malik Sherrod, a.k.a. Flash. I'm a running back at corner for the for North Oxnard Warriors. 
And my favorite player is Adrian Peterson. I'm out. Hi, my name is Robert Aguilar. I play for the Packers. I'm running back and outside linebacker. And my favorite athlete is LaDainian Tomlinson. My name is Xavier Harris. I'm a running back for the North for the North Oxnard Warriors. And my favorite athlete is Deion Sanders. My name is Nathan Earp. I, I'm tight end for the Titans. And my favorite athlete is Brendan Marshall. Hi, my name is Jesse Valenzuela. I play for the North Oxnard Warriors. I'm running back and linebacker. And my favorite player is Adore Jackson. Hi, my name is Bruce Powell Mathis. Um, my position is wide receiver, and I came from the Ventura Packers, and my favorite athlete is Des Bryant. Hi, my name is Johnny Ireland. I play cornerback, and I come from Agora Hills, and my favorite athlete is Richard Sherman. Hi, my name is Ethan Fetchu. I play um, for the North Oxnard Warriors, and I play outside linebacker. My favorite athlete is Mike Wallace. Hi, my name is Dylan Zier. I am a safety and I play for the Saints. My favorite athlete is LaDainian Tomlinson. Hi, my name is Jackson Sandvig. My position is linebacker. Uh, my team's the Steelers. And my favorite player is Bo Jackson. Hi, my name is Flamingi Aina and I play for the Warriors and my position is middle linebacker and my favorite player is Ray Lewis. Hey, my name is Damian Guzman. My, fa uh, my position is guard. My favorite team is the Cowboys, and my favorite player is Demarcus Ware from the Cowboys. Hi, my name is AJ Carell. I'm right tackle, and I play for the Valley Rush Ravens, and I like my favorite athlete is McFadden. My name is Miles Coleman. I play middle linebacker. I play for the Ravens, and my favorite player is Marshawn Lynch. Uh, my name is Fred Vasquez. I play middle linebacker. I play for the Warriors, and my favorite athlete is uh, Ray Lewis. My name is Jacob Petch. I play guard. My, I play for the North Oxnard Warriors, and my favorite athlete is Ray Lewis. My name is Robert Garza. Uh, I play left tackle. Um, I play for the North Oxnard Warriors, and my favorite athlete is DeMarcus Ware. My name is Armando Ortiz. I play center. I play for the Camarillo Roadrunners, and my favorite athlete is Darren McFadden. I'm Jack Ambrosio and I play center for the Agora Chargers. My favorite athlete is Justin Tuck. Hi, my name is Gabriel Martinez. I play for, I play left tackle for the Ventura Packers, and my favorite um, athlete is Darren McFadden. Hi, my name is Andrew Royal. I I play right tackle for the Oxnard Warriors, and my, and my favorite athlete is Tom Brady. Hi, my name is Carson Holke. I play left guard. I'm from Thousand Oaks Titans, and my favorite athlete is. Wes Walker. Hi, my name is Makai Barber. I play kicker. I play for the Valley West Ravens, and my favorite football player is Sebastian Janikowski. Hi, my name is Tommy Borowski. I play tight end for the Valley West Ravens, and my favorite player is Reggie Bush. Hi, my name is Brandon McVicker. I play defensive tackle, and my team was Camryl Midget Black. My favorite athlete is Demiris Thomas. Hi, my name is Spencer Mayer. I played on the Valley West Ravens. I play defensive end. My favorite athlete is Lawrence Taylor. My name is J.D. LaPola, my, my position is D-Tackle, and my my team is the Warriors. Uh, my favorite athlete is Troy Polamana. My name is Justin Meyer. Um, I play um, lineman on both defense and offense, and uh, I come from Camarillo Midget Blue, and my favorite athlete is Drew Brees. Hello, my name is Damian Nahar. I'm starting running back. I play for Newberry Park Steelers, and my favorite player is Bo Jackson. Hi, my name is Anthony Frosto. I play wide receiver, and I play for the Camarillo Roadrunners, and my favorite player is Marshawn Lynch. Hi, my name is Julian Stokes. I play for the Newberry Park Steelers. My position is receiver in safety, and my favorite player is Bo Jackson. Number one is Michael Johnson the third. He's a cornerback from Ventura Orange, racking up three picks, four breakups, and 12 tackles on the year. Number two is Gavin Birup, a quarterback from Camarillo Blue. He completed 58% of his passes on the season with over 500 yards in the air. Number 15, Carson Willis is a quarterback who lit it up for Ventura Orange with six touchdown tosses and over 600 passing yards. Number 17, David Webster is a tailback who gained nearly 800 yards and scored nine touchdowns for Camarillo Blue. It often takes three to four tacklers to bring him to a halt. High school John Elway Stadium as we get set here for the Midget West and Midget East get together here on a beautiful 
get together. This is Saturday, isn't it, Jake Downey, who is joining me, Mike Carlucci with you here. Jake, it's a crazy uh, week here, Thanksgiving holiday weekend. I, I keep I keep thinking today is Monday for some reason. I'm, I'm a day be, you know, behind, you if you want. Are still in food coma from yes. the turkey weekend? I, I'm through with the, the leftovers, by the way. I'm <laughs> going to go to Subway or something like that after the game. Anyway, Jake Downey, good to have you here, part of the Jake Downey Media Group, our president here, putting things together for the PYFL as we get set here for the kickoff. Mike Carlucci with you, directing Paul Del Pizzo and the uh, Misfit uh, camera guys, the A team, if you will, Victor and Dave, Mark, Adam Lightplay. We actually have two Marks who are camera guys. Mark Chapman and who's the other? And here we go with the kickoff. The Midget East will grab it around the 25 yard line, finding his way to the 26. And that was Jalen Sargent, I believe. So it's the Midget East in blue and the Midget West are in white. Midget East, of course, going from our left to right. So Jake Downey, the first two ball games are pretty exciting. Well, yeah, we're here in game two uh, with a uh, kickoff a little bit after noon, about noon 30. Uh, in the Bantam game, the West beat the East 24-6. And here we are at the start of the second game of our four pack of ball games with the Midgets. Okay, lining up the quarterback for the Midget East is Jalen Sargent. And a nice handoff, good opening on the left side there is Allie Brooks. Allie Brooks mostly known as a great defensive player. And the tackle was made there by David Webster of the Midget West team. So they gain a couple, brings up a second, actually got five yards on that, so second and five coming up here. In the shotgun is the handoff to the up back, good area to run, a lot of room, peeking his way through to the 40 yard line at a first down. This is William Camacho out of the Palmdale Falcons chapter, he plays running back and linebacker for the Midget East. First down, 10. A workhorse for the Palmdale Falcons this year. An updated uh, roster here. That's good. William Camacho also plays linebacker. Gained 1,200 yards this season. So he's going to be one of the go-to guys here for the Midget East. Bringing him down. It was again David Webster there on the Midget West Ball Club. So now we have a first down ball at tickling around the 40-yard line. Micah Adams is your quarterback. Shotgun throwing out to the 44 yard and tripped up. And that was Damian Henninger making the nice grab and the trip up by Midget West. That was number 32, Johnny Ireland, who plays for the Agura Chargers, first year player. He's known as a shutdown corner, Jake. Well, if you're a cornerback, that's what you want to be known as. A guy that doesn't let it get past you, keeps it in front of you, limits even completed passes to a minimum. Ball at the 46-yard line. Second down and four. Pick up a six on the previous play. Shotgun will be the mode here today. Adams going to keep it, running up the middle. Oh, he gets tripped. Oh, he fights off a tackle, spins his way, keeps his feet and gets to the 49-yard line. So Micah Adams picking up about three, maybe four yards. Maybe a yard short of the first down. Quarterback keeps well, that's it for the a couple key. You want to have third and short. Two. You're watching the PYFL here at John Elway Stadium at Granada Hills High School, home of the Highlanders. Nine minutes to go here in the first quarter of play. Ball just a yard and a half shy of midfield. Two receivers to the left side, one solo on the right. Adams going to hand it off to his go-to guy, Henninger. Stiff arms his way, fights for about two good yards, and picks up the first down once again. The tackle in there, David Webster, and also Johnny Ireland, man on the spot, making the tackle. Well, Camacho so far has been the go-to guy for his squad. Picking up a first down there, moving the chains, giving his guys a fresh set of four. And for an opening possession, that's what you want. You want to just move the ball. So William Camacho. Expect him to carry the ball quite a bit today. And Hedinger will also be getting some 
hands on the ball as well here during this Midget East and Midget West affair. This is game two of the afternoon here at Granada Hills High School, the PYFL. And a nice toss, but out of his hand. Pass will be incomplete, make it a second down and 10. East. Uh, Henninger, the intended guy there, and thrown into double coverage. Henninger almost came up with a nice catch, but the ball fell incomplete. Yeah, Julian Stokes out there assisting Johnny Ireland, creating some havoc there in the, the uh, completion. Nothing doing. It brings up a second and 10. 8.15 to go here, first quarter. You're watching the Midget All-Stars. Right now, it's the Midget East on the move. A little draw play, if you will. A gain of about four yards once again. Three-yard gain to the East. Well, it's not Camacho. It was Henninger this seven. time. So, kind of a nice two-man tandem there. Well, the minute you start leaning on one running back too much, that's about the time that he comes up sore and needs a breather. So, it's always good to have a couple guys you can punch with. Joshua Buckley, we're going to see a lot of him in the backfield there from Newberry Park Black Team. Joshua Buckley making the stop there. So now it's third and seven. Third down conversion. Been pretty good so far. Here's the handoff to Camacho. Running left. Got a lot of room. Some space. There he goes. Left side. 30. Tripped up. Brought down around the 28 yard line. Big first down play. Big third down conversion. Once again, the Midget East on the move. Looking good here on this first drive. On the West, 29 yards. The Midget All Stars. The East team against the West. Well, they talk about eating up huge chunks of yardage or your chunk plays. And uh, that's a chunk play if you can pick up a first down and move the chains 20 yards down the field. Ireland, if it wasn't for Ireland, Camacho may have picked up additional yardage. First down, ball at the 29 yard line. Midget East All Stars on the move. Quick out. Oh! got hit that was hunter smith the attended receiver from the santa clarita valley redskins couldn't get the handle but of course a nice hit there he is on the spot if you will johnny on the spot johnny ireland making the stop brings up a second down with 647 to go here in the first quarter the thing that gets me about johnny ireland is he is a first year football player so if this is his first year in pads and getting knocked around uh, you can tell the athletic potential that this young man has he is impressive Shotgun will be the mode of the day this time. Camacho going to keep it. Looking for some help. Fighting his way, pounding his way against those big linemen. I mean, if it wasn't for so Freddy Vasquez of two, North Oxnard, red team, he may have been able to pick up more. But a good uh, fight there to get that uh, precious two yards. Brings up a third and eight. Well, you got to figure we're in four down territory here at the 27. Youth football is known for not punting very much. And it also brings up the confidence that, hey, we got eight yards. Even if we get to fourth down, we're short, we're going to try it. Give up that confidence. Here's a pitch. Camacho to getting, a, from Adams, I should say. Camacho getting only about a yard, maybe two. Good quality pitch from Micah Adams, the quarterback. He, of course, is from the Palmdale Falcons team. He's a thrower and a rusher Small and a, a good game East. manager, if you will, Jay. Well, you, you see a running back uh, head outside and needing to cut upfield, and you just wonder where is that cut going to come from? Where are the positive yards going to come from? Because the pursuit was there, and there just wasn't a hole for him to slip through. Joshua Buckley again making the stop on Camacho, getting that pitch from Micah Adams, and it's now fourth and six with 5.24 to go here in the first quarter. Marking out the call quick. Out, oh, and the throw just th threw too hard. Ball, ball Out of the reach, off the fingertips. The that was West Lucas Gonzalez from the Santa Clarita Valley Apaches, the attended receiver, from their incomplete. Own so yards. now the hands of the ball will switch over, and it'll be the Midget West that will now get the offensive scheme of things. Well, just the start of things. One possession down, West getting the ball for the first time, and it's got to be stressed that these guys don't practice together for very long, so that shows in the, the, the passing the field, and in the sophistication no of even the running the field, plays. Yeah, they're not used to uh, each other. Not much practice, as Jake mentioned, so they're just feeling each other out on both ends, if you will. He's going to be underneath here. Here's the quarterback for, oh, and caught back of the line. 
The quarterback, of course, for Midget West is Gavin Beerup from the Cambria Blue team. Completed 58% of his passing, but that's the handoff there. I believe that was 44 for the Midget West. Dylan Sierra from the Moorpark Saints gets caught in the backfield there. And a nice tackle was Owen Hand from Santa Clarita Valley. Owen Hand, I just watched the old Mission Impossible the other day, and Roland Hand, Martin Landau played that character, and now we have, maybe he's a, a distant grandson. Owen Hand, this time, a little draw, rolling to the right, looking, looking, bear up. He is not going to get up. He is second and 14. It's going to be probably a loss of another three or four yards. So Beerup, nowhere to go. Beehive defense there surrounding him. Joe Anaya Jr. was in on the tackle. Just a flurry of ball players. AJ Corral, Damian Guzman, both from Ventura, and also Justin Maher from Camarillo Blue, just playing some fantastic defense. Kind of a free-for-all, Jake, on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, down, these all-stars, like I said, haven't West. played with each other, but they still know, go after the ball regardless. Meets at the quarterback. That's right. They've got the eye set here. Beer up's gonna say, oh, let's do the shotgun. Two backs left and right of him. Low snap, big rush coming, throw it up for grabs, and oh! Incomplete. Dangerous pass. And that was Lucas Gonzalez. With the big rush there. From the Midget East Blue. So now it is fourth and 19. Big hole here. For the Midget West Ball Club. 3.27 to go first period of play. You're watching the PYFL. With the Jake Downey Media Group. Game two of the afternoon. Looks like the West has declared a beautiful punt. day here in Granada Hills, California. All Southern Star California, spring, PYL summery are, kind of weather. Declare punt. There'll be no rush. The expected rain this it's weekend. I think it's been pushed till next weekend. So that's good for the fellas out here on the field. Fourth and 19, Jake. Well, in an All-Star game, usually teams kick it away, but we'll see what happens here. Yep. And they are going to punt this one away. Oh, and a nice. Bounce around the 41 yard line. It goes out of bounds. East will take over. First down and 10. Funding the ball there for the Midget West is Johnny Borowski. We're going to have the ball the. It was around the 41, 42. They're going to put it. Squirting the 40-yard line. So here we go. Midget East. Back in it. Micah Adams and his weapons, Camacho and Hedinger. He's got Hunter Smith, who is a fabulous receiver. Four touchdowns, 520 yards from the Santa Clarita Valley Redskins. A very fine coached ball club. All these players, all these youngsters are coached very well, but the Santa Clarita Valley ball team had a sensational year. Here's a Handoff and pushing his way to the 44 yard line was Evan Fissett from the West Valley Rebels. He had a nice season 865 yards, 61 carries, 15 touchdowns, also quite a few extra points. A very fast and smart running back. So we'll see a lot of these players have so much talent here. They all got to get some playing time, Jake. Uh, it's going to be interesting. Good, good, it'll be a good variety, if you will. Yeah, and remember, each of these guys was a stud on his team. If he's an all-star and in this game, he was a frontline guy for his club. But here, you got to fight for time. Second down and five. A lot of running room. There he goes. He's got an opening. Down the sideline, 25, 20, 15. Can he stay in? And he does. The referee says he stepped out of bounds, I believe, around the 10-yard line. But a great, great effort. But that was number 26. It would be Evan Fassett, the second handle of the ball. Unfortunately, the great run is being brought back to the 10, but uh, it looks like 26. He's such a height-sized fellow with so much talent, we can't see his number getting his jerseys crunched together. 
So it is Evan Fissette for Midget East. And uh, Johnny Ireland once again pushed him out of bounds. Actually just kind of nudged him a little bit, but he did hit the line. Correction, correction. First down and 10 from the 10 yard line. First and 10 from the 10, 2.29 to go first quarter. Midget East knocking on the, oh, here's a little exchange problem and a loose ball. But smartly, Fissette jumps on the ball. But they lose yardage, pick up a second down at about probably 15, losing a five yards, if you will. Well, well that's one of the play. casualties of not practicing very much. Is handoffs, timing patterns, slant patterns, everything that takes repetition and drills and getting used to each other. You just don't have that luxury in an all-star game. You develop your communication as you go along. Like you said, Jake, not a lot of time together. So second and goal. Ball was right at the 10, so it would be second and goal. It's first and goal, not second. And we have a different quarterback here for the Midget East. Good quick throw up the middle. One step drop. Incomplete pass. And that was Tyler ball. Walker, third the intended goal. receiver for the Midget East. Our quarterback is now Zach Johnson. I've seen Zach play quite a few years. And I've seen him grow. And he's done a sensational job. Over 1,200 yards passing this season. Six years of experience. 15 passing touchdowns. So he knows how to get in the end zone. He's a grizzled vet, Mike. That's right. He's got a mustache already. My goodness. <laughs> I think his goatee has a couple of those little gray pieces of hair coming out. He's such oh, a veteran. It, it is still Movember. Oh, we, there you go. Jake, you're talking about the miscommunication with all these guys that have played it a lot together and the exchange from his center, Zach Johnson, smartly balls it. So now it's fourth and goal. So the Midget East team makes a great pickup of about 40 yards plus on the run from Fissette. Evan Fissette, but now they're stalled. Zach Hawkins. Be getting some playing time here. It's been told. Here we go. Johnson going to throw a nice arm. He's got a man right there. Oh, it was in his hands. He had the reach. He had the height. Two men on him. Pass a ball incomplete. That'll be a turnover. And that was Allie West, Brooks West from the Palmdale Falcons. 23 on tackles. Mostly, line. mainly known as a defender, but this time couldn't clutch it in. Good coverage. Double team. There by Midget West. Michael Johnson the third, and I believe Johnny Ireland on there as well on the uh, defensive coverage. And now they'll. Exchange the ball. Possession goes back to the Midget West. Well, here we are. East team is out of possession. We're about 54 seconds away from the first quarter horn. And I would say these two teams are now fully familiar with one another. Now we have a new quarterback for Midget West, Carson Willis of the Ventura Orange team. 600 yards passing and six touchdowns on the season. He's a youngster learning the game. Getting well coached that time. To sprinkle over the yard, maybe a half a yard. As we're winding down here in the first quarter, 35 seconds to go. Scoreless tie. We're watching the Midget East and the Midget West from John Two yard Elder Elder last play for here West. The That'll make it safe on the of Granada Hills High School, Granada Hills, California. Mike Carlucci, Jake Downey from the Jake Downey Media Group, putting this great presentation for you for the PYFL. FootballUniversity.org. Uh-oh, little uh, mismatch, little confusion there, spinning and getting back to the line of scrimmage. Arson Willis. And a tackle there. Made by Allie Brooks. And the quarter is over. Oh, my goodness. A quick one, but a good one. Teams feeling each other out. Let's take a break. No score. As you're watching the Midget East and Midget West here on the PYFL, back in a moment. Look at the hands. Look at that level. I like 
like it. Half a sword. I like it. Too high. Hey. I'm fat, right? Jump Good. There you go. Nice job. JJ, that wasn't bad. Let's take five hits and let it go. Oh, oh my goodness. That is your guy. Cover two. He was bouncing right there. He ran right to you. Vision, vision, vision on the quarterback. Vision on the quarterback. Go get it. When the ball's thrown, it's only one ball, and everybody should be running to the ball. I'm going to turn two hands into one. Go ahead, put your hands up there with him. One, two. Control the wrist. I want you to notice the cowboy effect like he's riding a horse on the hut. Ready? Set, hut. Watch my knees, they go out like what? I'm climbing a big tree, like I'm a cowboy. You see that? Sam is pushing, all right? Cross his face. Now he takes the left hand, pushes. Hut. On the run. That a man. Good, good, good. If I try to come off, Hayden's going to keep his feet moving. Up a cut here. Chop, chop down here. Half a man. Fell on, fell leg work. Bam, bam. Power comes from what? Through your feet, through your hips, through the palms of your hand, guys. Hi, I'm Kristen Bell. Like you, Southern California is my home. Unfortunately, we have 80,000 neighbors who are homeless this holiday season, but you can help change that. Join me in supporting PATH's Imaginary Feast. You can help 3,000 people move off the streets this year, and you don't even have to come. Just visit imaginaryfeast.org to join the movement and pledge support, because no one should have to sleep on the street. And with your help, no one will have to. Let's work together to help our neighbors make it home. Hi, this is sports broadcasting camp founder and co-owner Jeremy Treatment. Check out the following video and also playbyplaycamps.com to learn everything about our sports broadcasting camps and everything you missed this summer. We were in Philadelphia, we were in Baltimore, we were in Montclair, New Jersey, Atlanta, Boston, Chicago, and of course here in Los Angeles. In fact, we're at Dodger Stadium right now. <laughs> Sports Broadcasting Camps, coming this August to UCLA, perfect for your 10 to 18-year-old sports fan. For more info, call 310-435-5500. That's 310-435-5500. All right, it's now time for the second quarter of play. We switch sides of the field, and here's our rollout. And a throw, and a man is there. A great catch there by number 21. Robert Aguilar for the Vitura Orange. A nice roll out there by Carson Wilson, finding his man, nice finding the vision. Robert and a pickup on that first down call of about six yards. So nicely done. Pick second and four coming up. 11.36 to go, just the beginning of the second quarter. Second down and two. Actually, we're going to give him a bit more. We've given him eight yards, so it's second and two. Sorry, fourth down and two. Uh, offense sure gets a lot easier to play when you have second and short. Third and short. Well, here we are, fourth and short. Evan Nua of the Santa Clarita Valley Apache. Get in there, D-line, let's go! Go, line! Defensively for the Midget East. Midget East in blue, Midget West in white. And we have a false start. A little anxious uh, on the offense there, getting uh, the vibe going, getting the feeling of... Uh, Ball starts on the seventh, about uh, five yards. Fourth down at seven. Score. If you just join us, Midwest, Midgets East. Midgets uh, West going from left to right. Exchange of other quality all stars here. Yeah, that was probably worth going for at fourth and two, but fourth and seven. Maybe time to put it away when you're down in the shadow of your own goal line. So fourth and seven. Punts here are uncontested in this all-star game. Hey, how can they go before they punt the ball? I think they get a friendly bounce. Just going to kind of go around the middle there, about 48-yard line. So the Midget East flag will take over. Johnny Borowski, we do have a flag out there, though. Let's see the call is here. Johnny, uh, or I should say Tommy Borowski is the punter for Midget West. And uh, that's some good height for that. Hey, 
chop block called against the East. Chop block? I don't see that too much in the youngster. So, Jake, on that uh, drive uh, previously by the Midget East, on the previous possession, was Zach Hawkins from the Valley Bengals, who gained that big 40-yard-plus pickup. We couldn't tell by the, uh, the jersey there. Yeah, hey, hey Zach, if, you, if you're watching at home, that scrunched-up jersey may look cool, but it's hard to tell who you are, kid. Yeah, so there's, and now there's Evan Fissette, number 26, who we thought that was. He's, he can actually, can actually read his jersey fully, but it's... Uh, as much as Evan would like to take credit for that long run, yes, it was Zach. Zach Hawkins. We'll see a lot of him, and we'll see a lot of the quality ball players. Here. So the penalty will bring it back to around the 33-yard line. By the way, we have uh, Sandra Velardi with us here uh, today. She'll be uh, giving us a, a report or two a little bit later. Yeah, she'll talk to the coaches at halftime and then uh, present uh, the MVP of this game with uh, his prize for being MVP. I don't know if we want to give that away yet. But, uh, <laughs> we must wait. The, the lovely prize is a priceless, not available in stores, JD Media Group ball cap. Oh, excellent. We got those on backward. Hey, refs having some words with the coaches. Come on, East Side! The coaches uh, here in this ball game, fine fellows. Decent guys, good coaches. Michael Johnson coaching the Midget West and Matthew Marchant coaching the Midget East. Matthew Marchant from Palmdale and Michael Johnson from the Ventura Orange team. So here we go, Midget East. At their own 32. Okay. And our quarterback is Colby Jackson from, once again, another fine ball player from the Santa Clarita Valley team. And he quickly throws it, but his receiver is confused, and that is Evan Fissette. Incomplete pass. We gave credit to that long run prior. Second down and, uh, ten. Just uh, well, like you said, they haven't played with each other, so there's going to be some communication problems here on occasion. More evidence of the need for more practice time. Second and ten. Ten twenty-three to go here in the first half. Gavin Virup. Actually, with Michael Johnson the third, well, was right there just in case if uh, mm -hmm. the set would have turned around and caught the ball. Okay, back to work. There's a pitch. Left side. And tripped up around the 35-yard line. That was Jalen Sargent from the Lancaster. Pick up of two yards. Jets picking up two yards right there. Tackle made by Freddie Vasquez. That'll make it third Midget down. West. Clearly, so far, real estate has been tough to come by. This has been a game of defense and punts, and it's, it's hard good. to string first downs together. Yeah, it's been some good focus on uh, the defense on both sides. Offense still trying to feel each other out on their own side there and make some things happen. Colby Jackson will be underneath. Nice exchange, a nice pitch. Running wild right, looking for something. Tripped up. That was no game on that play. Jaheim Hunter is first hands on the ball, who gained over 500 yards and, and five touchdowns this Please. season. But a nice defensive trip up by Dylan Sierra from the Moore Park Saints. Got to give the Moore Park Saints some love. Another great chapter in the PYFL. You're watching the PYFL, the Midget All-Stars here on the JD Media Group. Mike Carlucci, Jake Downey here calling the game for you with nine minutes to go here in the second quarter, first half. A scoreless tie. And it's a fourth and eight. Mostly uh, in this particular division, they will Nine times out of ten go for the first down to build up some confidence. You see the occasional punt, which we've seen earlier, but this time going to throw. A lot of time, good protection. Got a man wide open, and oh, knocked out of the way. Oh, my goodness, that was Jalen Sargent. Fall 
almost the big grab and the big first down. But a great defensive stall there. Ethan Filuch, or Fisiuch from North Oxnard there in the nick of time. So now ball will exchange. First and 10 going the other way with 8.29 to go. It's the Midget West ball. Well, Sergeant's going to see that in his sleep tonight because if he, if he hauls that in, he has daylight to the goal line. Sergeant and Bissette having a few nightmares early. Plenty of time to redeem themselves. From the 35-yard line, it's a big pickup there. About five yards, he does fumble, but I think he's uh, he was down. That's Robert Aguilar carrying the ball, and our quarterback, once again, Gavin Burup from Camarillo Blue. Pick so four yards Aguilar from play. Ventura. Ventura Camarillo connection there. And a good pickup of four yards will bring up a second and six with eight minutes and eight seconds to go. Tackle there was made by Swanson Nunnery of the Midget West team. Two receivers coming to the right. One lone, actually two backs to protect here. Play action. Oh, the screen pass. Nothing doing right there. And that was Jesse Valenzuela from North Oxnard. Couldn't keep his eye on the ball, so incomplete. I tell you, this game has a probably an incurable case of the dropsies. Every ball thrown up for a reception has ended up on this glorious green turf. But as we're talking about it. The, the timing of you know pitch and catch here is, is not easy when you practice four times. This is true. And Nick Wyatt right there was on him just in case he would have flexed in that grab. Play action, rolling the right, gonna throw a floater, but it's caught. The floater is caught around the 24-yard line. A nice grab by Nathan Earp from Thousand Oaks. The Titans, Ball great hands, pretty much catches down. anything that's open. And first down even ten. the little floppy throw doesn't matter. He's got those hands and brings it in. So that is a first down, move the chains. And uh, on the stop there for the East squad was Marcus Marchant of Palmdale. First down. Wow. The West showing some signs of life. Working on a short field and let's see what they can do. High formation here. Kevin Bira and the draw and a nice pick up there and some running room left side. He's got one, looking for a block, but he gets tackled around the 20 yard line. That was Malik Shira. That'll be a three-yard pickup for the West. From North Oxnard Gray. Take it down. My name is Malik Shira, a.k.a. Flash. Shira will carry the ball and will also play on the hot corner. Nice pickup there on first down. Rene Montoya was chasing after him for the Mitchell East All-Stars, and he made the trip up. So the game three, 6.33 to go, first half. You're watching the PYFL on the JD Media Group. Nice to have you aboard. In our second game here, the Midget All-Stars. These are the best. All the teams in that division. This time, a little rugby-style play. Like who's got the ball? And they got stopped. Maybe lost the yard. Shot made the stop defensively. We know that. For third down the Midget East. West. Brings up a third and four. Well, and again, we're probably in four down territory. In an all-star game, you don't have much to lose. Coaches tend to be less conservative in a game like this than in a regular season game. And we know Gavin Birup, he likes to throw it. He's a gutsy kind of quarterback. He's confident. Completed 58% of his passes. He ain't seen much running this time. He does get a man open around the five-yard line, fighting, getting the first down. That was a super throw nice and a play super by catch. The West. That was Tommy Borowski, who's Taking been punting in this ball game. And that time, a very big grab and a decent quality throw this time by Barrett. No floppy, nice little spiral on it. And now the West is knocking on the door. Five minutes to halftime. First and goal. Great pickup, good play, and we have a flag here. <laughs> the 
push it back there with the penalty. Ball will be on the seven yard line. There's the handoff right up the middle, fighting, pushing, he's in the end zone. There are no Looks flags. Like and that is a West. touchdown, Robert Aguilar for the Midget West. Getting the Midget West All-Stars on the scoreboard here with five minutes and a second to go here in the first half, six to nothing. Well, they got pushed back for the penalty to the eight, and it didn't matter because Aguilar was determined to find the goal line. Running back, linebacker combo had 10 touchdowns and 1,000 yards rushing on the year. And yes, the West are on the board. It's six nothing. So Aguilar gets the six yard touchdown run following the super throw there by Gavin Virup to Tommy Borowski. Good pickup of about 15 yards on the previous play. Go with the extra point. Nice uh, handle there, and it is good. Extra point is good. Making it seven for the West. Zero. That was Tommy Borowski with the extra point, I believe. Penalty on the play. Here's the flag. Actually, it was uh, Micah Barber. Micah Barber. He's the. Uh, Looks like it was a false start. Place kicker for Jam. the Midget West. There is a penalty, so the extra point is not valid. They will try it again. Well, makes it a little bit tougher. Well, Mike Barber, yarder. He's a big soccer player, as you can uh, imagine, of course. Another good handle. Looks <laughs> that was kind of a weird spin, almost like a, a and it's good again. Kick is good this time. So twice they have to attempt it. We'll officially make the score seven west. The second time resulted in the extra point. Time out on the field, just a second over five minutes to go first half. It is the Midget West All-Stars leading the Midget East All-Stars. Seven to nothing here on the JD Media Group, the PYFL. All right, we're back here. The Midget East and Midget West All-Stars going at it here with five minutes to go as we get set here for the kickoff following a touchdown by the Midget West Ball Club. Kickoff to about the 36-yard line. That means East will take over now. First Isaiah down Torres. 10 from their own 36-yard line. The ball to 36, so... Aguilar gets the six-yard touchdown run. Good for the lead here for the Midget West All-Stars. You're watching the PYFL on the JV Media Group Sports Network. Director Paul Del Pizzo bringing you the great action along with his mighty Hanley men of cameramen doing a great job here. Good angles and giving you a quality, quality production. First and 10. Micah Adams takes it and quickly exchanges it. That'll be a loss of one for these. To make it a second William down Camacho, one. who had a pretty good first couple minutes of the first quarter. We haven't seen much of him. That time getting uh, the handle and losing a yard brings up a second and 11. Well, you know, let's see what the East has in the tank. Uh, they've now been scored upon, and it's their chance to answer. They need to come up with some big plays here. This game close, get it tied. And once again, Adams, a lot of running room and looking and geeking and bolting in and out around to midfield. Four yards shy of midfield. Nice Nicely run done. on the right side. That'll Damian Hedinger from the Palmdale Falcons. Some nice fancy footwork there. Tripped up by Swanson Nunnery. And of course, helped out Joshua Buckley. He'll be there. He's like the captain here of the Midget West All-Star. Timeout called by the East. And the Midget East has called a timeout. So a couple of uh, you know, problems with the Midget East early in this game just because of the communication gap. But the, uh, but the skills are there and eventually they're going to create something and that was a nice run. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, clearly you, you have talent on both sides of the ball for, for both these clubs and the talent differential between the two is minuscule. So it really comes down to execution. Who's going to make that cut and, and cut through the hole? Who's going to make that grab? Who's going to make that tackle on defense? Who's going to make that pick? It all comes back to execution. That's right. Who's going to be the one to shine? That's the key. 
So we have a great crew here. Jake, we got, of course, Paul Del Pizzo, our director, Dave Sampson, Adam Lightplay, Mark Chapman, Victor. Victor Pantsereff is uh, uh, on our jib cam. Yes, the big crane, that thing is a monster, but boy, it brings a good, good focus and good uh, sight from the field, so some of the uh, focus on the players, and it just makes a good quality production. Great, great piece of machine. And Mark Friedlander is our fourth cameraman, who's also the guy who's talking to uh, the players in the pregame, having them ID themselves. Oh, good. Which is an important part of our broadcast. Absolutely. Look forward to seeing the full production on that. Mark Freelander, welcome. Good to have you aboard. And of course, Sandra Velarde will be here with some sideline reporting through the afternoon. Quality uh, reports you'll have on the field. Ch chat with players and coaches. Speaking of the coaches here for the Midget East, Matthew Marchant and his crew. really uh, enforce good leadership, good positive uh, attitudes, teamwork for their uh, all-stars. And of course, on the Midget West team, Michael Johnson from the Ventura Orange team. By the way, Matthew Marchant uh, from Palmdale. A lot of these uh, players have come from all sorts of areas around Southern California, driven many miles to get here. Well, the PYFL stretches uh, to the Antelope Valley to the north to the southern end of the San Fernando Valley to the south, Burbank to the east, and Ventura to the west. 3.22 to go, first half. Get some more action here. Here's uh, kind of running room to the left, and he's still on his feet. That's William Camacho once again. Looking good right there, like he did That'll the first couple minutes the first of the down, first quarter. The first down at 10 east. And it's time to move the chains. They got enough for that first down. Tackle, uh, tackle made by Buckley. And they stay in the hurry up. They want to move the ball and try to score before the half. Pistol. Uh, fake there, but oh, brought down. So Micah Adams, not going to outsmart that big defender. That's be number 98 for the 11. Midget West All-Stars. Justin Mayheher from Camarillo Blue. He's an animal on the line, and he's a big, big, high-energy fella. Well, we got to give props to the beef up front. All those guys with numbers between 50 and 79. Damian Guzman, A.J. Corral, Jacob Petch, Robert Garza, Armando Ortiz, Jack Ambrosio, and more later. The two receiver sets. Oh, we have a fumble. And I believe oh, it play. is recovered by the Midget West, West over the ball. Spencer yeah. Mayer from oh, Valley East West Ravens yard. Ball Club. Big defensive end comes up there, keeping his eye on where the ball is. And it's a turnover. And it's unfortunate Midget East was kind of looking a little, uh, a little bit of a sign of goodness there, a little quality of uh, positive feeling. But the bad exchange from Micah Adams, and uh, they relinquish the ball to the Midget West All-Stars. Got to hang on to the ball. That has a chance to be a game-changing play here before the half. What can the West do with it with the ball near midfield with two minutes left before recess? Carson Willis will be the quarterback once again. He's from the... And he's going to throw it left side, and this time almost intercepted. Coverage was just too good. The intended receiver was oh, Bruce Powell complete. Mathis. Second down and 10 for the West. One minute, 55 seconds remaining in the first half. Less than two half. minutes to go here in the first half. The coverage there by the Midget East, led by Isaiah Torres. And also Joshua Buckley. And Darian Doris. So clock is stopped. Buck 55 left in the half. Second and 10 near midfield. Carson Willis from Ventura Orange this time. Hands off. The, oh, red nicely. That's the big defensive line play that Midget East was looking for. And that was number 44. Owen Hand getting his, not just one hand, but two hands. And bringing the running back there, oh, Anthony Frosto for Cambria Blue goes Richard. down. So Owen Hand lending his hand and doing a great job defensively for That'll make it third down 15. Mike, I'm struck by what his coach says about him. It says, this kid is a disruptive force on defense, loves to mix it up and make big plays in the backfield. I think we've just summarized young Mr. Hand. Yes. That is the scouting report, and they do not lie. A little bit of a breather here. 
Short timeout. Third and 15. Losing five yards on that big play by Owen Hand. Anthony Frosto also plays a, a tight safety there when he gets on the defensive side, but uh, he was one of the leading receivers for the Cambria Blue team. She comes out of the backfield on screen passes. Caught 20 passes, and he had two touchdowns. He rushed for nearly 300 yards. A team leader and a great teammate. And he's such a good teammate, he's not gonna let that last play bother him. Midget West. Third down here. They've con converted two third down. Here's a toss out of the uh, outreach hands. Once again, Anthony Frosto on the throw by Carson Willis. Incomplete, so now it is fourth down. The ball intended for Anthony Frosto out of Camarillo Blue, a wide receiver in safety. Tough ball to grab, though, in double coverage. Pass interference was called. Oh, we have a penalty here. Pass interference. You don't see that much. That may explain why it was a tough ball to catch. Yes. Anthony Frosto is such a great athlete. He doesn't have the height advantage of those two defenders. The two defenders from the Midget East, Darian Doris, who's about four or five inches taller than him. He was, according to the referee, all over his back, so. Looks like more life left for the Midget West as they move the ball. They're now in the territory of the Midget East All-Stars. Ball first is down. at the 39-yard line. It's a first down as the referee's trying to signal the scoreboard. We're still waiting, but we know it's first down. So minute 40 to go. So can Jake, Midget West, can they capitalize here on this penalty? And do something here, get some more points on the scoreboard as you go into the locker room. Well, a touchdown here before the half would be a dagger. There's a nice throw and a great catch! I believe it's not interesting. No, he's got it. That is a completion. What a grab with a man draped on him. He was on him like glue. That was Tommy Borowski by the way, again with a big catch. West. He's the big tight end. He is the playmaker. He made that's a second big clutch catch. Carson Willis. Confident going with him, and we have a timeout called by Midget West. Minute 32. Wow. Good pick up there, first down, and the ball is at the 18 yard line. Let's take a short time out here. You're watching the JD Media Group Sports Network, PYFL, back in a moment. Midget West back here. On a first down, play action, a lot of room, gonna throw a nice throw, caught around the 27 yard line and running into the end zone. It that is a great a play, Robert Aguilar. That's a second touchdown. Out of the backfield. On a great composure type throw from Carson Willis. And it increases the lead now 13 to nothing with a minute 23 to go. Nicely done. Well, Aguilar showed us first by ground and now by air. Two touchdowns in the first half of this ball game and making an early case for MVP. 17 yards. Willis to Aguilar. All set up by the great catch by Borowski, Tommy Borowski. And now once again, the extra point attempt by Micah Barber from Valley West. Borowski's the holder. The kick is uncontested. And it's a sharp kick, and it is good. Timeout on the field, a minute 23 to go, and the Midget Point West All-Stars take advantage we'll of the uh, miscues by Midget East. They lead 14 0 You're watching the JD Media Group Sports Network back in a moment. And the kickoff by the Midget West All-Stars, and it takes a nasty bounce around the 18-yard line. So the Midget West, it's the Robert Aguilar show, a six-yard touchdown run and a 17-yard touchdown reception thrown by Carson so Willis. First and, 10 and the West All-Stars in front 14 to nothing with a minute 17 to go in the first half. 
You're watching the Midget All-Stars, the Midget Division, here on the PYFL, the JD Media Group Sports Network. Mike Carlucci, Jake Downey. Jake, good stuff for a Midget West, but Midget East, what gives? Well, I, I want to see what uh, the East has to respond with here. They've got a minute 17 left in the half, and do they fold their tent and go into halftime like this, or do they try to mount a charge and cut into the lead? Well, they got to do something here to get a good spark in them so they can take it back the ball, to the locker room and come go. back in the second half all gritty and geared up. Micah Adams, man in motion. Edinger, that is, in motion. And looking right, it's not Micah Adams. But a nice throw, and it's looked good from Puna left his arm, but uh, way short. That was Zach Johnson. It's his second time he's been a, in a quarterback here in the first half. Pass will be complete. They get a second down and 10 for the East. Brings up a second and 10 with a minute 10 to go. Yeah, Johnson having trouble getting comfortable back there because he's running for his life. Well, we've watched it all in this first half, Jake. This Midget West defense has uh, just been zoned. They're in that zone. They know what's going on. They go for the ball. They kind of, they're, they're almost like they're predicting what's happening here. Well, now that they know that the East team is likely going to throw. Yeah, Allie Brooks originally lined up by himself with a slot receiver behind him now. Open up a giant screen, but read nicely by the Midget West All-Stars there, and they're going to lose some yards as we're getting under a minute remaining here in the first half. And reading it and uh, orchestrating a, a good a defensive wall there for Midget West. For a loss. Uh, it was number 55, Freddie Vasquez and Joe Foxner. And we have a timeout on the field. Now let's take a short time out. Let's go uh, here on a break. Uh, a minute, uh, le less than a minute to go here. First half, 14 nothing in favor of the Midget West All Stars. You're watching the JD Media Group Sports Network. Back in a moment. Less than a minute remaining here in the first half at John Elway Stadium on the campus of Granada Hills High School. You're watching the Midget West and Midget East All Stars. 14 to nothing in favor of the Midget West. Zach Johnson, good protection, throws up the middle, caught around the 28 yard line and fighting to get to the 30. It's a nice play there. And that was our boy. Timeout, East. Zach Hawkins. <laughs> Just gotta look for that jersey that you can't read the number. It's gotta be Zach Hawkins. All right, takes Hawkins. me back to the the Oklahoma Nebraska oh, games of the 70s when you had the fairway jerseys and over half jerseys inches. to begin with. If you didn't know it was Billy Sims, you couldn't tell because you couldn't see the number. Unless you uh, could identify his spine and his back muscles, you wouldn't know. That's right. So a nice pickup by Zach Hawkins. He's had two big offensive plays here. Unfortunately, nothing resulting in to any points for the Midget East All-Stars. Taking their short time out here. 51 seconds remaining. Mike Carlucci, Jake Downey, watching the JD Media Group Sports Network. The Midget All-Stars coming up after this game. We'll have the Senior All-Stars and then the finale tonight. The Junior All-Stars all right here at PYFL on the JD Media Group Sports Network. Back to the line they come. Midget West playing some great defense in that first half. Keeping the Midget East All-Stars off the scoreboard. Under a minute to go. Ball at the 28 and a half yard line. And Johnson keeps it. The keeper, if you will. Looking and running. He's going to run out of bounds. Stop that Smart clock. play. 45 seconds. Hey, any Smart play by a quarterback. Picking up the first down. Make it look positive. Zach Johnson. 15 touchdowns. The passing department this season. Over 1,200 yards passing. And like he said, a, a gritty veteran. Six years in youth football. Looking for some of that good veteran leadership. Rolling to the right there, or throwing to the right. It's incomplete. Having a tough time on the uh, incomplete catching pass. the ball there. And second down, 10. Damon, uh, Damian Hedinger from Palmdale. Brings up a second down. And Damian 
manager looks uh, like he needs to get some stick em or something. He needs to focus a little bit better in the second half because he is a quality ball player, Henninger. Wow. Great hands out of the backfield and on the, the line and great defensive play. Just a great all-around athlete. So we just uh, Henninger, we see those kind of plays. We, we look forward to him having better times. What's this? Let's stack everybody once again to the right. Two receivers stay left with a slot receiver. Big time coming, throwing it, and if he could beat his man, but he didn't go where he was supposed to. That was Rusty Griswold from Santa Clarita Valley. He's got quick That's feet and big complete. hands there, but uh, the, the feet went the wrong way. It went inside instead of going toward the sideline where he was supposed to be because that's where the ball was thrown. Yeah. Well, I applaud them for the trickeration, but uh, it still comes back to execution. Well, they've been able, Jake, to run quite a few plays here under a minute. It's 41 seconds, so they're using quality formations and good judgment, just uh, some miscommunication on some of the receiving core. So now third down and 10 yards shy of the first. Time, quick out to the side, caught, and close to another first down. I think he got it with that lunge there. And that was Damian Henninger. This time, Damian comes through. First down at 10. Nicely done. He needed him at that time and came through. So the clock is running with 32 seconds to go. 46 yard line. A quick bark by Johnson. Going to throw it to the right and overthrows Henninger this time. Fastball incomplete. Second down 10. 23 seconds remaining. Yeah, we'll second and 10. 23 seconds remaining first down. Well, with 23 seconds left, uh, you, you got to start being more vertical. Um, easy to say, tougher to execute, but the guys in blue got to think downfield. Bridget West uh, looks a little bit burned out here, but they're holding their own. Jason J.D. Henderson of Ventura Orange right there on the coverage of uh, keeping Come his on, eye on Henry Church. Sure. Three seconds. Johnson quickly. Left side toward the sideline. And oh, he had his man there, just missed him by a beat. And we have a flag, so flag throw on the field. We have a penalty here, a little interference. Freddie Vasquez. A little rough housing there, rough him, roughing him up on the 40 yard line. So that's good news for the Midget East. 19 seconds to go. Pass interference. Got time for a couple big players if they can uh, get it close, take uh, something positive in the locker room. That happened. Well, the East desperately needs a score here. First down. 39 yards, 19 seconds. Let's see what they have. Ball at the 38-yard line of the Midget West. Johnson, nice quality throw. Oh! He took his eyes off it. That's what happened. Hedinger was right there. I think he tried to run and look toward the end zone before the ball came, and he had Plenty of room and plenty of daylight if they would have caught it. Just kind of looking at the angles here, I wonder if he also wasn't looking back into the sun. That could be true. As Paul did mention Paul the glare of certain offense. parts here of the uh, field to create some problems with vision. And we have a penalty here. Looks like uh, the field kind of has that uh, ice rink kind of look. Probably people watching at home couldn't tell if it was 80 degrees or 8. <laughs> Some fake snow out there. Where the uh, stands, grandstands. Oh, tipped at the line there. Pass was deflected. That was uh, Mitchell Torres, the Second attendant down, receiver, 20. but tipped nicely. There's that big man there. We'll he's call him a man because he's playing like one. Justin Mejiger of Camarillo. Quick like a cat, plays like an animal, and he can deflect that ball any time because of his height advantage. So it's third and 10, 12 and a half seconds to go here in the first half. You're watching the Midget East and Midget West All-Stars going at it. Johnson busy on the throw, and this time it's intercepted, overthrew his receiver at the 44-yard line. The ball's at midfield, ball intercepted. most likely run it out, and that was number 32, Johnny Ireland. You know, he was so 
Johnny on the spot, majority on this first half. We didn't see him for probably the last five to seven minutes of this time, right there when they needed him most. Well, I still marvel that this is his first year playing football. Uh, but clearly a natural for the game. Chosen to the All-Star game and now coming up big when he's in the game. A rookie of the year candidate, if you will. John in Ireland getting the interception and it kind of a shame in a sense for the Midget East because Johnson, that quarterback, doing a pretty uh, efficient job. Actually almost looking, uh, looking like uh, Carson Willis on the other side for Midget West. Precision passing was uh, really good. Accuracy and then that time just overthrew his receiver. Yeah. Um, again, comes back to timing. Repetition. Mm -hmm. These quarterbacks are used to throwing and used to timing, but with their guys, yeah. their guys. And, uh, you know, all these guys from different chapters have to learn a uniform playbook. So it's asking a lot in four practices to figure that stuff out. Five seconds to go. Gavin Barrup is uh, back at quarterback for the Midget West All-Stars. And this time going to hand the ball off to Malik Sherrod. Alex Sherrod getting some nice pickup there about six yards, but time has run out on the clock. So the first half is in the books. The Midget West All-Stars in control over the Midget East All-Stars. The score is 14 to nothing. Midget West, Mike Carlucci, Jake Daly, and also we have Sandra Velarde with us. And let's go down to the field right now with a report from Sandra Velarde. I have Coach Marchant with me, head coach of the East team. Coach, tell us about the first half, your thoughts on how your team played. Um, I felt like we played we played well. Uh, we had a couple mix-ups on defense. Uh, it's, it's hard when you have a lot of kids that haven't played with each other. They're getting to know each other, so they have mix-ups in the backfield. Um, on offense, we moved the ball well. We just didn't punch it in the end zone. Um, I think the second half will be a whole different story. What is your plan in the second half? How are you going to lead your team to, to score this one? Um, we're going to our ground game. That's what we've done successful all year as with my team with the Palmdale Falcons. So we're going to run the ball and we're going to stop the run. That's that's what we're going to focus on in the second half. Now I understand this is your first All-Star game, correct? Yes. Yes. Any differences between the regular season and All-Star game? It's a world of difference. It's it's a lot different. Uh, it's it's my first time doing it. Like I, like you said. Um, uh, just getting to know these kids. They're a great group of kids, and I really want to see them go out with the win. So I'm hoping that I can do my job in the second half and help them out. Great. Good luck, Coach, in the second half. Thank, thank you very you. much. All right. Thank you, Sandra. Good report. Appreciate that. We'll talk to you a little bit later on. Well, it's halftime here, and we'll be back with the second half right here on the JV Media Group Sports Network. It's 14 to nothing in favor of the Midwest All-Star. Back for the second half a little bit later. Thanks. Bouncing right there, he ran right to you. Vision, vision, vision on the quarterback. Vision on the quarterback. Go get it. When the ball's thrown, it's only one ball, and everybody should be running to the ball. I'm gonna turn two hands into one. Go ahead, put your hands up, do one. One, two. Control the wrist. I want you to notice the cowboy effect, like he's riding a horse on the hut. Ready? Set. Hut. Watch my knees, they go out like what? I'm climbing a big tree, like I'm a cowboy. You see that? Sam is pushing, all right, across his face. Now he takes the left hand, pushes. Come on, that a man. Good, good, good. If I try to come off, Hayden's going to keep his feet moving. Up the cut here. Chop, chop down here. Half a man. Pedal on, pedal leg work. Bam, bam. Power comes from what? Through your feet, through your hips, through the palms of your hand, guys. Hi, I'm Kristen Bell. 
Like you, Southern California is my home. Unfortunately, we have 80,000 neighbors who are homeless this holiday season, but you can help change that. Join me in supporting PATH's Imaginary Feast. You can help 3,000 people move off the streets this year, and you don't even have to come. Just visit imaginaryfeast.org to join the movement and pledge support, because no one should have to sleep on the street. And with your help, no one will have to. Let's work together to help our neighbors make it home. Hi, this is sports broadcasting camp founder and co-owner Jeremy Treatment. Check out the following video and also playbyplaycamps.com to learn everything about our sports broadcasting camps and everything you missed this summer. We were in Philadelphia, we were in Baltimore, we were in Montclair, New Jersey, Atlanta, Boston, Chicago, and of course here in Los Angeles. In fact, we're at Dodger Stadium right now. Sports Broadcasting Camps, coming this August to UCLA, perfect for your 10 to 18-year-old sports fan. For more info, call 310-435-5500. That's 310-435-5500. Welcome back to the Midget All-Stars. As the first half was all about the Midget West All-Stars, leading 14 to nothing here as we get set for the kickoff of the second half, third quarter of play. And the Midget East are kicking it off from the right to left, the Midget East in blue. And here's a very good effort as he's fighting to get to midfield. And that was Jesse Valenzuela from North Oxnard. With a nice kick return here as we begin the second half, and uh, the Midget West will see if they can continue the train of quality offensive plays. Well, if the West can put a touchdown across in this possession, they just about put the game out of reach. With the clock moving and with the East not showing a whole lot of offensive firepower, I have to think that this could be a knockout blow. Robert Aguilar was the key offensive factor in the first half with two touchdowns, one on the ground and one receiving. That's Beer up underneath. Hand off to Valenzuela. He's fighting and he bounces away. He gets three. I can't believe it. They had him twice back in the backfield for a loss. And he gets two yards. My goodness, Valenzuela. Coming through big time from the handoff from Gavin Beer up. Gavin Beer had some quality uh, quarterback play in the first half. And he gets the reins here. First up offensively for the Midget West. Now you have to like the determination when you see a second and a third effort. That's what scouts look for, a guy who doesn't go down on the first hit. We actually got back to the original line of scrimmage, and he had a fight for that. That's five yards. Second and ten. High right, formation. This time the nice hand up. Good exchange and running for the races. He's got one man to beat, and he's brought down with a big pickup nonetheless. That's Xavier Harris, or you might pronounce it Xavier Harris. A nice big pickup there of about... 18 yards, first down. And uh, saving the day there was William Camacho playing defense that time. Well, for the East, they need to dig deep. This is their game here. they got to make a stop. Somebody's got to come up big here if they're going to have any chance to pull this one out. they got to prevent the blowout here, but right now, trying to put another nail in the coffin. This time, runoff tackle there. With a nice opening, that was Valenzuela. Could be a loose ball, too. Waiting for the referees, and yes! Oh, this is the play, Jake, you were saying. This is something that the Midget East All-Stars needed to prevent that extra nail in the coffin. Well, after encouraging such a turnaround, the next step is, what do they do with it now that they have the ball? Well, Valenzuela has had the ball now, what, two or three times, and he's mostly known as a sure-handed runner and ball handler. And that time, it got knocked out. And we're getting uh, the word up here. It was Kamari Burks that jarred the ball loose. So a big-time defensive play. Now there's a flag. It might be too much time. 
So first down here. Ten minutes to go here in the uh, third quarter, just beginning, if you will. You're watching the PYFL on the JD Media Group Sports Network. Mike Carlucci, Jake Downey, Paul Del Pizzo, directing this uh, fine production for you, along with some great camera persons, which we will get to in a moment. A little pitch to the left side. Looking for some room, and he's got, he's a good authoritative fast runner. Good speed. Nicely done. That's Jalen Sargent back in the ball game. Had a little bit of a rough part in that first quarter, but this time a quality run on the nice pitch there from his quarterback, Colby Jackson, who's back in the game as well. Colby Jackson, let's talk about him. Six touchdowns this season, 74% pass completion. He's also a big time runner, so expect a two way play from him to keep the defense respectable and alert. Colby Jackson. Promising start to the East Drive. Second down. Got some of that yardage back prior because of the penalty. This time it's second to 15 and maybe about third and about 14. And that rugby style barreling through. And they pick up a couple and bring up a big third down. Nope, they're saying he got the first down. So the, there it is. Move the chains, if you will. Something that the East needed, Jake. Um, you got to build it slowly. You need to build success upon success and really just a sustained drive here for the East at this point. Joshua this Buckley. Get back in. Yeah, that's right. Joshua Buckley did make the stop there. But, uh, too late for Hero. First down for the East. Oh, look at that rush. Spinning away, pushing and hurtling up across the 45 to the 46 or 47 yard line. And uh, Jalen Sargent, that's twice he's come up with some big running efforts, Jake. Well, uh, Jalen Sargent again with the second effort, with the third effort, like a pinball bouncing off of tacklers and just falling forward. And that's a big eight yard pickup on first down. Jalen a little banged up and comes out of the game now. Yeah, he's hobbling a little bit there. Hopefully nothing serious. Maybe a Charlie horse. Freddie Vasquez, who was big in that first half defensively for the Midget West team, made the stop in place for the North Oxnard Red team. Second and a short two. Shotgun, Jackson handoff this time, but fighting and almost brought down on a clothesline tackle there. That was William Camacho, the ball handler. And there's Vasquez once again bringing him down because of Camacho getting out of the hands of Micah Adams. So it's probably a loss of one and now we have about third and three. 7.33 to go here in the third quarter. The West Midget All-Star is leading 14 to nothing, but the East trying to get this impressive drive continued on and get some points on the board. A little pitch out, running left, off tackle, fighting. Brought down Vasquez, boy, he's been on that ball and been tackling. He's got at least close to 10 tackles, maybe more in this game. And there is our man Hawkins. Zach Hawkins this time. And he got enough for the first down. Once again, moving the chains. That's what it's all about. Move the chains. Use the clock wisely. Uh, it's become a cliche, but it represents offensive progress. And the East just needs something right now to cut into this two touchdown deficit. Well, we know their coach got into him there at halftime. We walked over there by the locker room and made a nice speech there. So, uh, Started around the 48-yard line. They may have lost a couple there. Yeah, sometimes halftime talks are not uh, just uh, a ice cream social. Um, football is a tough game for tough people, even at this age. And uh, Coach uh, didn't hold a whole lot back. That was Jaheim Hunter, the ball carrier there, losing some yards. So, no, actually he lost the yards. So it's second and 11 with 6.14 to go, third quarter. Into the ball game. Matthew Marchant, the head coach of the East out of Palmdale. Mm -hmm. uh, was definitely impassioned in uh, pushing his guys to focus and play better, play harder in the second half. Nick Wyatt has just come in the ball game to play wide out to the left. This time a little toss. Oh, out of the hands. And once again, Damian Henniger made a couple good plays before the end of the first half. That time lost sight of it as he's looking over his shoulder and couldn't get the hands on it. So it'll bring up an incompletion and third down. Yeah, I have to wonder if that was a, another sunlight play looking back into the sun and just got blinded. 
Well, if you look on one part of the field, it looks fabulous. The other part, it looks like a skating rink with snow. The kind of glare, kind of a day. It's a beautiful, sunny Southern California day here in Granada Hills, California. We're watching the PYFL Midget All-Stars. These are the best from the Midget Division. Jackson pitching out to left once again. Camacho, the Camacho man. Oh, he gets three of the tackle, runs free toward the sideline, past the 50, past to the 45. He's knocked out about the 39 yard line. Nice run by Camacho. Just what the doctor ordered for the East squad. Cashing in a tough third and 13. And now first down, a fresh set of four. 40 yards to go with about five and a half left in the third quarter. This is an impressive drive, something the East All-Stars of the Midget Division needed. Very impressive indeed, and trying to keep it going right here this time. Delayed hand up, but good enough. No, nope, they may have gotten a yard, maybe half a yard in that play. The impressive drive is not something that we've associated with the East squad so far today, until now. That's Jalen Sargent there. Getting his hands on the ball, made a couple good runs here at the beginning of the second half. Camacho will take a break, and Henninger's taking a break as well. Second down and nine. nine. Uh-oh. Tried the pitch, but, and they may have gotten it back. They did lose yardage, but, boy, getting in there like a bolt of lightning for the Midget West was number nine, J.D. Henderson from Ventura Orange. Now he's come into this game with four sacks and seven forced fumbles, and he created a force uh, of a fumble right there. Yeah, that almost looked like just kind of an unforced error, but Henderson was in there causing a ruckus and made that a little more uncomfortable for the East. Under five minutes remaining here. It's been all midget East here with the ball, but uh, no points yet, but moving the ball. They're at the 44-yard line, third and 15. And that was Micah Adams. And you got to figure with where the ball is on the field and being down two scores that this is four down territory for the East. Well, now we got a fourth down coming up here. Ball at the 42 yard line of the Midget West. Midget West, can their defense here stop? Fourth down conversion. So in this drive, Jake, it's been about four first downs. Very impressive for the East, but can they keep it going here? They've got a fourth down and they've got Johnson back at quarterback. Tyler Walker, left side. The pitch out goes to Hawkins. He can only get a couple to the 40-yard uh, line, and that's it. So an impressive drive gets stalled against that tough Midget West defense. They put up the wall, and they're going to take over on downs. And here comes that offense led by... Carson Willis, Gavin Bear up at quarterback. Good tandem they've been using, switching in, switching out. And look out for Robert Aguilar. He's so far the offensive player of the game. A six-yard touchdown run to get the West All-Stars on the scoreboard. Of course, the 17-yard touchdown reception from Carson Willis. Had the pleasure of meeting Robert's mom at halftime, and she wanted to know where she'd be able to see this game and get a DVD. And I told her he was the leader in the clubhouse as the MVP. Oh, a trip up there on the exchange. Caught in the backfield there, and we have Carson Willis, the quarterback for the Midget West All-Stars. And getting the ball, Tommy Borowski recovering it from the bad exchange yep. to his running back. I believe that running might have been Malik Sherrod there. And they keep switching players in and out, so we, sometimes it, they're, it's a good mix-up. Getting everybody fresh, getting every player some rest. Jesse Valenzuela, he's a linebacker, and of course, that time, at running back, he's the one that got the ball jarred loose from him. Isaiah Torres was the one that messed up the previous exchange. This time, they get a couple yards on second down. That was Aguiar off tackle. The aforementioned Mr. Aguiar from Ventura Orange. Both touchdowns in this game. Picks up three yards on second down. He's a thousand yard rusher and the offensive star of this game so far in that first half. Two touchdowns, Robert Aguilar or Robert Aguilar, whichever you prefer. Under two minutes to go here, third quarter. 
Third quarter went very fast as the Midget East consumed quite a bit of that time. Rolling out, oh, big time sack! Blindsided, didn't see it. Number 23, Kamari Burks out of Palmdale. He led this team with 46 tackles. He had seven sacks coming in, Jake, and an interception. Kamari, huge. He comes up big time. He's uh, part of the big moments on that uh, ball team there from Palmdale. Oh, man, didn't see it coming. Kamari gets in there, just pancakes him to the turf. That's the hit of the day so far. That is a highlight for the highlight reel indeed. Because he had a lot of time to throw. He, he was back there with the composure, took his time, had time to look, but all of a sudden the blind side blitz coming through and sacked him big time here as we get set for a punt. And that's Borowski. And a quick catch. Didn't call for the fair catch. They're just hurled and made the good big scoop there. That's Hawkins. Good field position. This is good for the Midget East All-Stars now because they had such an impressive first drive, offensive drive in there as we begin the second half. And this time, they got to build on that and get the ball in the end zone. Yeah, but you hear that? That's time running out on the East All-Stars. We're 40 seconds to the end of the third quarter, and the East needs to do more than just move the ball and have a pretty drive. They need to punch some balls in the end zone. They need to punch that big defensive wall when they get into the uh, opposition territory. They need to be more consistent. Micah Adams is now the quarterback for the Midget East All-Stars. A little reverse right there. A lot of running room on the right side if he can build up some speed, but he gets tripped up. Nicely done as that's Robert Aguilar coming through. Oh, my goodness, not just offense. He makes probably one of the better defensive plays. Saved a really big opportunity there for the Midget East. Well, Robert heard us talking and said, I better add to my stats on defense. And I believe, and right, let's uh, take a short time out. Oh, the quarter has ended. My goodness, very fast quarter. Let's take a break here. You're watching the JD Media Group Sports Network. It's the Midget All-Stars. Back in a moment, 14 to nothing in favor of the Midget West. I'm going to turn two hands into one. Go ahead, put your hands up, do one, one, two. Control the wrist. I want you to notice the cowboy effect like he's riding a horse on the hut. Ready? Set, hut. Watch my knees, they go out like what? I'm climbing a big tree, like I'm a cowboy. You see that? Sam is pushing, all right, across his face. Now he takes the left hand, pushes. Hut, on the run. That a man. Good, good, good. If I try to come off, Aiden's gonna keep his feet moving. Upper cut here, chop, chop down here, half a man, pedal on, pedal leg work. Bam, bam, power comes from what? Through your feet, through your hips, through the palms of your hand, guys. Hi, I'm Kristen Bell. Like you, Southern California is my home. Unfortunately, we have 80,000 neighbors who are homeless this holiday season, but you can help change that. Join me in supporting PATH's Imaginary Feast. You can help 3,000 people move off the streets this year. And you don't even have to come. Just visit imaginaryfeast.org to join the movement and pledge support. Because no one should have to sleep on the street. And with your help, no one will have to. Let's work together to help our neighbors make it home. 
Hi, this is sports broadcasting camp founder and co-owner Jeremy Treatment. Check out the following video and also playbyplaycamps.com to learn everything about our sports broadcasting camps and everything you missed this summer. We were in Philadelphia, we were in Baltimore, we were in Montclair, New Jersey, Atlanta, Boston, Chicago, and of course here in Los Angeles. In fact, we're at Dodger Stadium right now. Sports Broadcasting Camps coming this August to UCLA, perfect for your 10 to 18-year-old sports fan. For more info, call 310-435-5500. That's 310-435-5500. Here at Granada Hills High School, as we begin the fourth quarter of play, it's the Midget All-Stars, PYFL for you. Now it's going to be third down as they get a half a yard. Getting the ball. Evan set back to back and not getting any good ground. Not gaining anything, if you will. And now it's third and 11. He lost a yard right there. We've got two receivers coming up to the right side. One deep to the side. Freeman on the line. Quick step throw right at midfield. He had his man open, but couldn't hang on. Big stick there by the West. Malik Sherrard made the stick, and the player is down right now, so we hope it's not serious. Coaches will come out and assist. And let's take a, uh, another time out here on the JD Media Group Sports Network. 14 to nothing, 11-10 to go. Fourth quarter back in a moment. Okay, we That's have a Hunter. fourth down at 11 as we're back to action here. And a flip in the air as he was in the grasp. And the Camacho, the Macho Man, running to midfield. He's way short of the first down, but a nice effort by William Camacho. On that fourth down call. Uh, that's Hunter Smith. That was the uh, young man that uh, got uh, temporarily injured on that uh, previous play. He's from Santa Cruz Valley, plays for the Redskins. Big season this year, four touchdowns, 520 yards, and uh, looks like maybe got the wind knocked out of him. Huh? I hope that's it. You know, uh, his uh, he's holding his uh, shoulder and neck. He's getting a rub from uh, one of the coaches on the sideline. Might have been his dad in the Redskin gear. And uh, whatever it is, we hope uh, he comes back short. We wish him well. A great player, a good young kid, good leader on that team for Santa Cruz Valley. He's having a big season, so we hope that everything's cool with him. That's Hunter Smith, number 81. Now, it's the Midget West back on offense, and that's the quarterback, Gavin Barrup. Hand off to Nathan Earp of Thousand Oaks there. Oops, beg your pardon. That was Xavier Harris from North Oxnard, and he's uh, hobbling off the field. I feel like I said this about uh, a quarter ago, but these guys in blue need a big play to get back in the game. Well, they showed some signs, especially in that third quarter, but they just stall and they just can't continue on. And so pretty much flawless for the Midget West All-Stars as Vera throws the ball and quite low and his receiver right there could not come up with it. Bruce Powell Mathis from Ventura Orange. Big season, 20 receptions, 400 yards, and three touchdowns. That time couldn't come up with it. Quite low on the throw, but nonetheless, third down. Under 10 minutes remaining here in the ballgame. 14 to nothing in favor of the Midget West All-Stars. You're watching the PYFL here on the JD Media Group Sports Network. Mike Carlucci, Jake Downey. Two more games to follow this. We had one earlier this morning. And where would you rather be on a gorgeous Saturday afternoon? I want to be only one place, and that's right here. Virub will fake draw, and he is going to quickly get rid of it. But that defense coming through for the Midget East All-Stars. Evan Nua 
was in on the help there on the defensive line. And so when you're a quarterback, the coaches talk about quick release, get it out of your hand. You got to make a quick decision. If Europe was watching 86, Tommy Borowski sprint down the field, but he didn't pull the trigger. And then if you don't pull the trigger a second later, the, the freight train is going to come. And he got smothered. He needed to pull that trigger when he was looking. And that's his go-to guy in this ball game. That first half, Borowski made some fantastic clutch catches. So you never need to lose confidence with Borowski. But like you said, he just held on too long. And by the way, uh, helping out on the tackle there was Marcus Marchant, son of the coach of Midget East. Going to take a short time out here. It's 14 to nothing in favor of the Midget West All-Stars. Back in a moment on the JD Media Group Sports Network. And we're back at you here with 8.36 to go in the ball game. 14 to nothing in favor of the Midget West All-Stars. Fourth down here for the West and a quick throw out. And he has his man open as he beat his the defender around the 38-yard line. But took his eye off the ball and bounced off his arm. Anthony and Frosto, the intended receiver out of Camarillo Blue. And the Midget East squad gets a stop that they desperately needed. Yeah, Jalen Sargent made the, uh, the stop there defensively, at least getting into the vision of Fosto. And they get the ball here, exchanging it. They take over, possession. First down, and they are in Midget West territory at the 47-yard line. Still a lot of time remaining. They can get something going here in the next couple of minutes. Back in this ball game, only down by two, 14 to nothing. The Midget West All-Stars leading the Midget East All-Stars. Shotgun, quick snap, throw, caught. No, it was not caught there. Camacho was trying to get his hands. There's Zach Johnson from the Santa Clarita Valley Apaches. Over 1,200 yards passing this season. Gritty veteran quarterback. We will definitely see Zach Johnson in a higher division years to come. Of course, expect him to uh, do well in the high school prep league. Johnson pitching to the right. That's Hawkins who had a good first quarter. This time fumbles it and I believe it is recovered by the West. Yes, it is. And that very large ball player there, Justin Mejiger of the Midget West picked it up. Oh, Joshua Buckley? Was it Buckley that knocked Buck it loose? Buckley was on it. I don't know who knocked it loose, but Buckley out of Newbury Park Black pounced on it. Yeah, Justin Ager of Camarillo Blue knocked it loose because he's such a big defender. Tough to get around him, so. Well, a costly turnover. Could be the nail, that extra nail in the coffin here, especially if the Midget West All-Stars drive it down and kill the clock. Nice runoff tackle, getting some good protection, good uh, blocking. Robert Aguilar, 1,000-yard rusher this season for the Midget West All-Stars, picks up about seven or eight yards, bring up a second and two. Aguilar with both touchdowns in this game, one by ground, one by air, counting for all the scoring in a 14-0 game. Bouncing away, getting free for a moment, but that's Hawkins back there. All right, I beg your pardon, Dylan DeVito of the Valley Bengals making the stop. All these young men can play the game. Big hits, solid tackling. Everybody knows what they're doing out there. Sometimes the execution is lacking, but it's not for effort. It's not because these guys you know, aren't the best in their age group for what they do. Xavier Harris. That's a good effort there, but there was no way to escape the cell there of defenders of Midget East. And here's a throw out toward the left side, caught, and holding on to his ankle and saving some big yardage. That's Tommy Borowski, who's been big all day with some clutch receptions. And holding on to him there and defensively. That makes a fourth down play a little easier at fourth and three, fourth Nathan and four. Nathan made the stop. Jake, you said fourth down. and. Makes it easier, four yards to go for the first. Oh, yeah. And the confident Midget West All-Stars, they've been uh, very proficient on their third and fourth out conversions this afternoon. 
Big pickup there. That's Robert Aguilar again, just following his offensive lineman and offensive tackles, falling off tackle and picking up a, a first down. Move the chains. Against the West, more of a hammer lock on this game. Defense seems a little worn out there. And just going through the motions here. 6-14 remaining in the ball game. 14 to nothing. Midget West in front of the Midget East. Of John Elway Stadium here on the friendly grounds of Granada Hills High School. There's Aguilar again just picking up safe yardage. Smart. Holding out of that ball tight. Two hands. Uh, you know, the West can play their cards right here and, and run out a whole lot of the clock. I mean, here we are uh, under six minutes left in the ball game and Every, every play is about 40 seconds if you keep it on the ground. Ball's at the 33-yard line. Gain of three yards by Aguilar. Second and seven. Dylan DeVito made the stop that time. Running crazy and wild to the right and bouncing near the sideline. That was Julian Stokes from Newberry Park Black. Getting uh, some participation on that play there and close to a, another first down. We'll bring up a third and about three or four. Well, the West has been good about that, making third down manageable. Third and, and certainly now when they need to eat clock and just keep moving the chains, they've been pretty efficient. Less than five minutes to go. Here is the midget all-star game. I believe that's Aguilar again. Got uh, tripped up there nicely by Darian Doris of the West Valley Rebels. 81 tackles for Darian Doris, by the way, for West Valley this season. And he's a great defensive player. He's got two defensive touchdowns, but uh, no opportunities today for him. And so now we're looking at a fourth and one with about four and a half minutes left in the ball game. The West can convert this. They can eat up at least another two minutes of clock. And this is a textbook type drive here. And uh, caught in the line there. Big time play. That was Dar uh, Darian Doris. He's the big tackler. We just talked about him. 81 tackles coming in to the, to the ball game this afternoon. And nothing bigger that time. And stops him on fourth down. They take over on downs. Less than four minutes remaining. I don't know if you've heard this from me before, Mike, but the East needs a big play to get the ball back. and. See if they can cut into this lead, but hey, time, it keeps on ticking. Well, if he didn't say it, we were feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> One interesting thing about an all-star game is that this late date and down two scores, if the East does punch in a touchdown, they get the ball back. Ooh. This is uh, more intriguing as we get here for the latter minutes of the fourth period. 14 to nothing in favor of the Midget West All-Stars. Camacho, ragdoll type tackling there, but he's still on his feet fighting, but nowhere to go. A big barrage of defenders from the Midget West. There's the exchange. From solid Mike defense Adams. today. Not a lot of big plays. You got to fight for everything you can get. Well, defense, usually in an all star game, Jake, you have guys that just. They have a knack for going to the ball, even if you just meet the guy you've only been hanging out with him for five minutes. It's effort. offense. Yeah, it's effort. Offense, a little different story because you have to feel each other where you're going to be, where you're not going to be, that kind of thing. And that's why the run game is more reliable in an all star game than a passing game. But we have seen some great passes, so. Yeah. I mean, fortunately for us, not for a lot of the spectators. Adam's going to keep the ball running left, got some speed, but he's got about four or five defenders of. The Midget East, or I beg your pardon, the Midget West, and uh, he can only do so much hurdles for about maybe two. Well, maybe we're too results oriented here that we're thinking go score and get it back and score again. And perhaps the East in an all star game is just thinking about showcasing their guys and running the plays they know. Without talking to the coach, we just can't know. But we can certainly hear the parents down in the stands feeling urgency and saying, get, in, get on the ball. Adams going to keep it, running to the right, trying to get by the defender. He's got a little bit of room on the side, and he gets around the 
35 yard line. I think that's enough for a, was it enough for a first? That might be a little short. So Micah Adams. Very Not deadly though, running we got out of bounds. And throwing, pardon me? We got out of bounds and now we have a fourth and one. So he was a yard shy. Fourth and two. Oh, our public address announcer says two yards, so fourth and two. Micah Adams, 766 yards rushing coming into today's game. He's a five-tool kind of guy, filling on defense as well. But right now, at quarterback, in the shotgun, taking the low snap, rolling right, going to throw it quickly, but it's deflected away. Big time defensive play there by Swanson Nunnery from North Oxnard Gray. That would have been a first down, my goodness. It was a nice play call, but number six. Big time defensive play from Nunnery. Yep. Nunnery, number six on the field there. And wearing that number six proudly, and he may have just closed the game right here. A minute 33 to go, 14 to nothing in favor of the Midget West All-Stars. We've seen some entertaining plays. Of course, the fans, uh, the parents of Midget West, very happy. Uh, Midget East, not two, but they've seen some good effort nonetheless. Coming up, we'll have the senior All-Stars. Later tonight, the junior All-Stars here, part of the JD Media Group Sports Network. And running free, and he is gone. 10-5, touchdown, big hole, no flags. And that was Damian Nahar out of Newbury Park Black Team, who usually plays on the defensive side at a defensive end. This time, he's got such a big body. And that was 37 yards right up the gut. And it's now 20 to nothing in favor of the Midget West. What happened there, Jake? Well, failure to tackle, and a huge hole, and Nahar straight down Main Street and gone. And we have an injured player for the East squad. Man down That's the not field. good to see. Let's take a short time out here. It's 20 to nothing. We'll get back with more. Minute 24 remaining. You're watching the JD Media Sports Network. Back in a moment. Minute 24 remaining in the ball game. And the Midget West All-Stars just scored a 37-yard run by da uh, Damian Nahar as they're going for the extra point. And it is perfect as Micah or Mika Barber of Valley West. So now we have a timeout on the field, a minute 24 remaining in the game. 21-0 Midget West over the Midget East All-Stars. And the injured player... Seems to be okay. Looks like he had the wind knocked out of him for the Midget East. I believe it was Ali Brooks of Palmdale Falcons. Most importantly, we're glad it's nothing serious. Yeah. Such a violent game. A wise man once said, great game to watch, tough game to play. Actually, it was Raymond Ortiz was the uh, injured player, but he seems like he's on the bench and he's feeling okay. Well, maybe he had the wind knocked out of him. Of course, that big body of Damian Nahar went right you know, right through his gut there to get that touchdown. So we hope Ortiz is fine. He seems to be okay. So we wish him well. And like you said, a tough game and pain and gain in this, uh, this particular ball game. 21 nothing in favor of Midget West as we get set for the kickoff here. Minute 24 remaining. So... Quality performance by the Midget West All-Stars here as Hawkins takes it. Running right, sideline, looking for some daylight and hurdles inward to about the 44-yard line. Good effort there by Zach Hawkins of the Midget East All-Stars. And let's see if they can just take something positive into this game and get some good plays, some good flow, good play calling, maybe get into the end zone, at least leave, you know, try to you know, prevent the shutout. Uh, you've got to look for a, a small ray of sunshine at this point. Minute 14 on the clock. You haven't put up any points yet. Let's see if the guys in blue have any fight left. Well, they have a, a fighter-style coach, Matthew Marchand of Palmdale. He's given it his all. And he expresses leadership and quality effort. And just go out there and do the best you can. And Richard East All-Stars did that. Midget West All-Stars just had uh, things go their way from start to finish here. 
Johnson looking, looking, rolling to the left. He's got some room. He's going to throw it. He's got a man wide open around the 42. And it's still on his feet. Caught, and he hurdles to the 34 and a half yard line. That was Damon Henninger coming up with a nice big catch. He's had kind of a up and down type game, but he's made some good catches when he has been there. And that's a big pickup. And there is a timeout on the field. Let's take a break. Come back in a moment. 21 nothing with less than a minute to go here in the ball game. Okay, we're back to the action here. Less than a minute to go. There's Hawkins. Had a big run the first quarter. He's making another one. Oh, he hits off his own guy. He's going to the sideline. Ten. He's knocked out around the seven yard line. That is a pickup of about. 26 yards. By the way, the previous pass play was good for 32 from Johnson to Hedinger. 32-yard reception, and now a 26-yard run by Zach Hawkins. 43 seconds to go, and there's that uh, chance to, uh, you know, get that goose egg off the scoreboard. I'd say they've been showing some fight. Well, they don't give up, of course. Matthew Marchant, he's that kind of preacher and coach. You fight to the finish, regardless of what the result is on the scoreboard. Mike Carlucci, Jake Downing with you at the uh, conclusion of this ball game. We'll go down to the field, talk to Sandra Villardi. We'll have an interview with our game MVP. But to me and Jake, everybody out there, all these All-Stars are MVPs in our mind. Here comes Johnson. He gets a pitch because he gets held on, the, on his ankles there at the line, and it's quickly uh, recovered. We have a timeout, 35 seconds to go in that first down call. Ball is the seven-yard line, and let's take another short timeout here. Back in a moment from the JD Media Group Sports Network, 21-0 in favor of the Midget West All-Stars. First down and 10 yards. The ball's at the 13-yard line as they lost some yardage on the previous play. Here's a throw to Henninger again. Oh, Henninger. He's dropped more than he's caught today, and he had a nice, sure touchdown. But maybe that's that glare of the sun that got in an incomplete. He had the height and the advantage there. Just either A, the sun was in his eyes. It'll bring up a third down. 24 seconds remaining. It's 21 zip. Midget West leading the Midget East. There's a nice uh, throw there by Johnson. Well, we got a third and goal play from about the 12. 10 yards to go. West 21, East 0. 30 seconds remaining. Shotgun, Zach Johnson. Familiar territory for Zach. Good exchange, a lot of time, good throw. He's got a man open, and it is incomplete, just out of the reach. And that was Tyler Walker from the Highland Ingalls. So, one more play. The Highland Eagles rep getting represented by Tyler Walker there and almost got a touchdown, but uh, incomplete. So, as Jake said, one more play to go. Fourth down, Again, 24 and a half so seconds remaining. And the Midget All-Stars. We'll Coming up next, we'll have division. the Senior All-Stars. Good job by our camera operators today. Dave Sampson, Mark Chapman, Mark Freelander, Victor Pansev. Adam Light play, and of course our director Paul Del Pizzo, and we'll be back for more. This time just tossed toward the goal line, incomplete once again to Tyler Walker, the intended receiver. So Zach Johnson, good effort all game long. All these All-Stars have put in the effort, but right now it's just the big plays were made by the Midget East, uh, I beg your pardon, the Midget West, Robert Aguilar, big on offense and one super defensive play in that fourth quarter. Well, I saw his mom at halftime, and now I can say for real, he is our MVP. He was looking that way after a half, but you never know what might happen in the second half. But yeah. in a game like this, Mr. Aguiar stands alone. He had a six-yard touchdown run and a 17-yard touchdown reception from Carson Willis. Pretty much all the scoring they needed. And we're officially at victory formation. 18.8 seconds, 21-0. Midget West leading the Midget East. On the PYFL, the JD Media Group Sports Network, and the footballuniversity.org bringing it to you. We've got two more games to go, and that is going to do it. Any uh, final thoughts, Jake Downey? 
Domination by the West. Congratulations to both teams. Getting chosen to this game is the honor. And uh, glad that we're going home without any major injuries. Mm -hmm. Well, a great effort on both parts, but uh, once again, the Midget West All-Stars, they prevail. Robert Aguilar, the MVP of the game, and uh, just a fantastic game to watch. Final score once again, Midget West 21, Midget East nothing. And now let's go down to the uh, field for our MVP, and she'll have a word or two, Sandra Velarde. Sandra, take it away. We're here with Coach Johnson, an MVP. Player 21, congratulations on your two touchdowns winning the game today. Tell us what was going through your head uh, during those plays. I just wanted to score and help our team win. How did the coach prepare you for today's game? He gave us awesome plays and ran us at practice a lot. And yeah. And how exciting is it for you to be MVP of an all-star game, not just a regular game, an all-star game? A lot. <laughs> okay, well, good luck and congratu congratulations. I'm here with Tommy Broski, who had three catches this game. Tommy, tell us what was going through your head for that 35-yard catch. I was just paying attention to the ball when the ball was thrown and just run to it and try and catch it. <laughs> How did your coach help you prepare for today's game? Just working us hard during practice, helping us run our routes, and preparing us. Okay. Now, were you excited about being part of an all-star game? Yeah, very excited. Well, congratulations. Good job today. I'm here with Coach Johnson, winning today's game. Coach, how important was today's win? Oh, it was very important. I think we had a good week of work. They only give us five days to put together these All-Stars, but hey, we did the most of what we could. We had a good group of coaches, a good group of players, and we pulled out the win. Any Anything you're in particularly proud of, of your players today? I'm actually proud that they were able to hold the other team out of the end zone. I mean, it's hard to pitch all, uh, shutouts in All-Star games, and we did a fantastic job. Coach, how different is it working with the All-Star team versus just regular season team? Oh, I tell you, the, the difference is, the uh, of course, the talent level. I mean, there's rarely any weaknesses. And then when you also put together an All-Star coaching staff, it makes my job a lot easier. Now, is it difficult to have all these personalities that haven't played before come together in, you know, five days a week's time? Uh, a little difficult at first, but we were able to come together. The more practices that we had, we were all on the same page. And the main thing we wanted to do was make the kids have fun. Great. Well, you played a great game today. Good. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Good work. Good words there with our MVP, Robert Aguilar. A fantastic game by Mr. Aguilar. And once again, the final score, the Midget West All-Stars defeat the Midget East All-Stars 21 to nothing.